Mellow greetings, everybody. My name is James. I am from the internet. And today we are going to be talking about why you need to organize. Now, I have made a lot of these videos over the last year and a half. And in quite a number of them, I usually end with explaining to you that whatever the problem is, usually the first thing you need to do is organize with other people, whether they be like-minded in an ideology you are trying to push, or they are your neighbors and you are trying to get change effect in your community, or they are your coworkers and you are trying to get better working conditions. And as has been proven out time and time again this year, when labor, when the working class organizes and brings forth a list of demands rather than individually meekly asking for just another crust of bread, well, they usually end up winning. And if you have any question as to what that looks like, please feel free to peruse your local browser and check out the results of both the PepsiCo strike at the Frito-Lay plant and the Nabisco strike and see how they ended with fat juicy new contracts approved by those labor unions who now are getting more and have better working conditions than they did before they demanded. And so amid a backdrop of these victories, plus the class action lawsuit of Disney employees against Disney for not paying a living wage. Of course, the Instacart shoppers who are going out of their way to tell people to delete the app and no longer use it, even though that's how they pay their rent because that deal has gotten so onerously bad. Allow me to introduce you to the next and newest massive labor strike here in the United States of America. Here we go! Hollywood Studios to head back to the bargaining table after TV and film crew union authorize a strike. Uh-oh, looks like there might be a labor shortage coming to a favorite TV show near you. Negotiations between Hollywood Studios and a union representing its film and television crews are set to restart after backstage workers voted overwhelmingly to authorize an industry-wide strike. The International Alliance of Theatrical Stage Employees said 90% of their eligible voters cast ballots over the weekend with more than 98% in support of strike authorization. Quote, the members have spoken loud and clear, said Matthew Loeb, president of the IATSE. This vote is about quality of life, as well as the health and safety of those who work in the film and television industry. Our people have basic human needs, like time for meal breaks, adequate sleep, and, oh my lord, a weekend. For those at the bottom of the pay scale, they deserve nothing less than a living wage. Now, this is the part of the show where I let you all know that not so long ago, I started as a production assistant in television. I actually worked at Dick Clark Productions and MTV out of the Santa Monica office. And I started making $60 a day. And that was for a 12 hour shift. And no, there is no union representation for all those little helpers and people quote, below the line. But I can tell you personally what it's like to work 12 hours a day every day for a month straight and still be dead fucking broke. The vote to initiate a strike comes after months of failed negotiations between the union and the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, which represents major film and television production companies, who again, just like any other company or corporation, have a bottom line and are looking to pay everybody as little as possible so that they can profit as much as possible. This decision allows the IATSE to initiate a strike at any time should talks with the motion picture and television producers remain stalled. This is the first time in their 128 year history as a union that their members have authorized a nationwide strike. Why after 128 years? Because it's that fucking bad now. Because wealth disparity in this nation has gotten so out of control and so out of hand that nobody can afford to live 
within two hours of where they work because the only way you can afford a house or an apartment when you're getting paid shit wages is to live quite literally in the middle of nowhere. And then, of course, you have to spend a shit ton of money on transportation. So either way, you're screwed. However, the Motion Picture and Television Producers Association does not care whether or not you are screwed, whether or not you can afford transportation, and whether or not you have a roof over your head. All they care about is paying their employees as little as possible so they can profit as much as possible. I am going to keep repeating this goddamn sentence until all of you have it permanently seared into your brains. In a statement, the American Motion Picture and Television Producers said that they remain committed to reaching an agreement that will keep the industry working, quote, we deeply value our union crew members and are committed to working with them to avoid shutting down the industry at such a pivotal time, particularly since the industry is still recovering from the economic fallout from the COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, really, the, the industry is recovering from the pandemic? Are you sure? Uh, I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a deeper dive into that in just a second, but please let me continue. The IATSE represents a wide swath of industry workers, from studio mechanics to wardrobe and makeup artists. In total, it acts on behalf of 150,000 crew members in the US and Canada. Around 60,000 of those are covered by current TV and film contracts that are being renegotiated. The union has been advocating for better working hours, safer workplace conditions, and improved benefits. And that sentence should be familiar to everybody because this is quite literally what every single group of striking laborers are asking for. Better working conditions and a better quality of life because over the last decade wages have predominantly remained unchanged while the cost of living continues to skyrocket and eventually something is going to have to give and in this case it's either going to be the studios giving these union members more money or the studios giving their customers no new content in the spring Whoa. I hope that the studios will see and understand the resolve of our members, said Loeb. The ball is in their court. If they want to avoid a strike, they will return to the bargaining table and make us a reasonable offer. The AMPTP said reaching a deal, quote, will require both parties working together in good faith with a willingness to compromise and to explore new solutions to resolve the open issues. In other words, the working class is demanding more and the capitalist class is trying to find a way to give them as little as possible. Why? Survey says, so that they can retain as high a rate of profitability and skyrocketing revenues as possible. In its current contract, which was extended and now ends on September 10th at the latest, the IATSE is calling for a new three-year agreement that would give behind the scenes workers higher pay, meal breaks, improved contributions to health and pension plans, and a bigger cut of profits from streaming productions. These demands come on the heels of one of the most tumultuous times in the industry as productions worked through a global pandemic to ensure studios had content to deliver to consumers. The pandemic has also irrevocably changed the production ecosystem. For 18 months, consumers have been stuck at home watching TV shows and movies. This boost in viewership has given streaming services such as Netflix, Disney, HBO Max, and Amazon Prime Video massive gains in subscriptions and subscription fees. And if you're wondering what those massive gains look like, don't worry, I already checked. I have it for you. It's right here. In 2020 alone, Netflix, Amazon Prime Video, Hulu, Disney Plus, and HBO Max generated more than $26.5 billion, an increase of 32.6% in total revenue. Now, unless they have also matched and given raises to everybody to the tune of about 33% comparative to what they were making beforehand, 
Well then, all the streaming services have done is pay employees as little as possible so that they could retain as much as possible. And I gotta tell you, 26.5 billion sounds like they're retaining like a motherfucker. An industry-wide strike would essentially stop Hollywood production in its tracks, similar to what the writer's strike did 14 years ago. That strike between 2007 and 2008 led many shows to shorten or postpone new seasons and led to the cancellation of others. And now your favorite TV show, regardless of whether it's on a major network or on a streaming service, is now also in danger of having its production pushed back, if not canceled, because the extremely wealthy financiers and capitalists at the top of the money pyramid have decided that they want to nickel and dime the people who do all the actual work while they're seeing a 33% gain in revenue by doing nothing more than they did the year before. So now what does this mean for you, the average viewer at home, the fellow member of the working class? Well, number one, it means if you want to show solidarity with these soon to be striking workers, by all means, you should be canceling some of these streaming services if you can. I finally bit the bullet and got rid of both Disney Plus and Netflix. Yes, I'm still paying Hulu and yes, I'm still paying YouTube, but the Hulu's for my wife and the YouTube is for my live stream show. However, I just managed to cut out 50% of the streaming apps I was paying for and there's no noticeable drop off in the quality of my life. However, if enough people show solidarity, well then members of the IATSE will be getting more money for their jobs and thus they will see a direct improvement in the quality of their lives almost overnight. And that is how solidarity amongst the working class goes. So everybody, for the love of God, please continue to organize. When you effectively organize, you can effectively agitate. And when you effectively do both of those, you can present demands instead of asking politely for something. And more often than not, that list of demands will be met because capital without labor does nothing. Capital and capitalism do not build the things you love. They do not film the shows you watch. No, all they do is provide in lieu of labor to get some money out of the entire thing. But without labor, nothing, and I mean nothing, gets done. So everybody, show the laborers and show the working class some love and some solidarity because 2021 might be absolutely horrible and there might be a whole bunch of storylines floating around behind us but this organized labor workers realizing they're worth more demanding more and getting more this is the only goddamn good thing happening out of this entire craptastic year so y'all might as well get on board because 2021 is the year of the working class until next time my name is james i am from the internet and i am out peace